you guys. I didn't want to take it. So let me let me. When the current wave is experienced a certain amount of damage, this allows us to maximize the amount of time we have to collect some from the sky and collect some when we need it. This is a strategy essential to all PVZ challenge runs that don't allow sunflowers. This strategy works through day two with one close call from a seagull zombie. Days three to seven were all. Oh, there's money in it. This is my room for a I call this build of mine. <laughs> I thought for now. I let me get my more. My enemy is ready. He's gonna wait until I win. Repeater is all right, but probably the worst option out of the pea shooters we have so far due to the large sun cost. Day fifteen was one of the harder levels we've played so far, but making this a three pea shooter. Was really fun since I basically just spam plant food on the endangered spring beans to beat the level. The next couple of days were more refeed spam. Day 19 was the last sun level, so I brought sunflowers again. It actually turned out to be tough, even with the sunflowers though. We passed on the second attempt. Day 20 was yet another produced sun level. Why on earth did Popcat do two in a row? That's beyond me. This one was significantly easier than a lot of them though for some reason. And okay. day 21 it sounded me even more. Well, Yet got, another produced sun level. We need a bill of battery. Seriously, three in a row. Well, Despite how mad I was about seeing that yeah, gimmick. I regret it. They all let me down. Completely forgot to be used. He's so so. level. That's embarrassingly ironic. I remembered the second time around. Day 22 was extremely close. If the imp cannons had exploded even a second later, that lawnmower wouldn't have hit the imps that scattered in that place. Let's get eyes on our enemy is probably in the way. Oh, oh! If you don't believe I have an enemy, then take hide and see. That's myself. Oh, my mom is fucked. Shut up! 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 Shut Yes, it was that to beat me. Take over and I leap to I win or loot. Just one build and I win. But the amount of zombies were too overwhelming for the whopping five three feeders the conveyor is allowed to give. Like I said, the fun will be over quick as the difficulty of the challenge will soon spike. After an easy day one, we unlocked our next pea shooter, Split Pea. Splippy will be quite useful later on as it's our only way to beat certain gimmicks and zombies. Day 2 introduced the first of these. It's not our big dumb building. Day 3 was easy using repeaters on minecarts. Day 4 was kind of funny because it's like a fair level but only gave pea plants anyway. Day 5 was a breeze. Day 6 was the last stand level and we actually unlocked yet another pea shooter, pea plot. I didn't really expect that it would be that useful, but I would later be proved wrong, at least for this world. Wild West is already the most P world. They said there was nothing special. Oh, little Barry, stop it, whatever. Okay, yeah. Two, now let's see. Chicken Wranglers. Chicken Wranglers. We can have three generators. The chickens have a couple of losses, but we managed to fend them off using a strategy I like to call my One elder. We beat day 11 with just one boss for a few pods. Day 12 was another conveyor. Yeah, that's it. We swept day 13 with just split pea. Day 14 had heaps of chickens, but I found that using pea pot on a minecart took care of them since it shoots in bursts of 5 peas, as well as using red pea shoes plant food to spray the chickens. For day 15, pea pot clutched up again. Can you see why I was wrong about this guy for Wild West? It just saves so much valuable sign when planted on minecarts. And it gives you so much wave stalling opportunities as you can pick and choose when to instantaneously kill zombies by moving minecarts. For day 16 I made most of the endangered walnut while using split peas to take care of prospectors and reg pea shooters for basics. Mm, oh, day 17 was close due to these flowers. And when I say close, I mean extremely close. Okay guys, and it cooks. Let's get up. Let's get up. Day 18 was the last stand level that really showcased how vulnerable we are without lightning rays. Yeah, they just spam so many damn chicken wranglers. Look at all these chickens. There's nothing my repeaters could do. I restarted, this time with pea pot and, well, the same issue. I tried reg pea shooter and, yeah. Out of desperation, I tried with three peter and that ended up much the same. So, now that I tried each pea shooter individually, I was kind of out of ideas. 
I mean, I noticed that each time chickens killed me, it was because prospectors infiltrated my defenses, clearing the path to them. So I tried a mixture of three Peter's split pea and red pea shooter. Three Peter was Okay, let's get ready. Oh, let's see. Mm, okay, well, uh, let's get it. Wait, what? Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, yeah. No, not the chat. Right. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, I'll put it on the Day 20 was another not okay corral conveyor. Day 21, though, started pretty grim. It was really finicky to stop the zombies crossing the flowers. On the last wave, one or two zombies would always slip through. I tried this level countless times, but it would always lose this way. However, I eventually realized that when it came down to just one zombie, I could just shovel up the plants in other lanes for extra sun and then spam pea shooters in the lane to protect the flowers. I honestly kind of felt dumb for forgetting about this feature, especially since I've used it a lot in past challenge runs such as the one Seesaw series. Day 22 was a given plants level. Day 23 was another tough flowers level, but was, was to say, pretty happy with it. Surprisingly though, the solution was not overthinking it and just using Reg Pea Shooter, whose plant food was great for taking out pianists and dealing with chickens. I also used Let's the see. final wave trouble spread at the end that I've forgotten about before. They all went surprisingly well with Pea Shooter until the final wave where a chicken wrangler in every lane ruined everything. However, in my second attempt, I barely managed to cling on until the final wave, then plant food with all the walnuts to protect them from chickens, as well as slide them up and down the tracks to stop the bulls charging. I then know the lawnmower is carrying me hard and did some more final wave Pea Shooter things. And just like that, we've beaten Wild West, since day 25 is just a conveyor belt boss fight. <laughs> Day one was simple with repeater. In day two, we split peas to break the ice on the front of repeater. This would be so much easier if we could use more potato or any five plants. Okay, I think we have no efficient option to thaw out plants. Yeah, yeah, it's not obviously right. a problem yeah. in a world based around freezing plants. Day three was a conveyor level. In day four, we experienced a massive difficulty spike due to the introduction of hunter zombies. You know how yeah. I said we didn't really have feed, anything to uh, prevent our plants? Uh, do you think All this guy does is freeze plants. For that reason, he's probably the most threatening zombie so far in this run. After a couple of losses, I eventually beat the level by using the cheaper reg pea shooter so that losing one to the hunters wouldn't cost too much loss in sun. It was still really close. I also found split peas useful as I could hit the hunters from behind rather than in front so that they were out of a snowball range. Day 5 was another conveyor level. Day 6 turned out to be basically impossible. There's so much icy wind in this level, not to mention the constant barrage of hunter zombies. So, is that it? Is there a well, no. Actually, it's okay. That's because there's a pea shooter. Towards our other pea shooters and is immune to the freezing winds itself. That's right, we're getting fire pea. The problem is, he costs 100 gems. And we have a grand total of 8. So we're going to have to do some gem grinding. I did all my daily quests in the travel log, watched some ads, and played some Penny's Pursuit. I then registered my email to bring us up to 55 gems. I swear it used to be 100 gems. I mean, considering how they massacred the expansion epic quest gem reward, this is... Okay. I had to wait until I had to all of this again, except the email registration, obviously, to bring us up to 100 gems. Yeah. Just we have the depart. Let's end the video with, uh, got it here. Oh yeah, and there's some clouds that can be planted, by the way. No need to freak out. I blasted through day 7 of 5D as well. It's so satisfying not to have to worry about the freezing winds and hunting zombies. Day 8 was another conveyor, the third in this world, may I add. Day 9 introduced the Dodo Rider Zombie. While flying through this level with 5P, I realized something very cursed. Where the hell do they go when the Dodo dies? There's feathers, but what about the imp? Does the imp just disappear? Is the imp made of feathers too? Is it another Dodo in an imp costume? We may never know. Day 10 was yet another conveyor. I'm starting to see why people want to have any conveyor there on this world in particular. That's 40% conveyor level so far. Day 11 proved to be the toughest level yet. This is partially due to the introduction of the Blockhead Zombie, a straight up tankier alternative to the Buckethead. Something we'll be seeing a lot more of in the future. The sheer amount of Blockheads and Bucketheads in this level were implemented to encourage the use of Charge Guard. 
Is it fuel turns in? Wait. How is it? Well, we need to ask him. Enemy's not there because he's getting this dark. Until we can come over one. Hopefully he couldn't handle this level on his own. As a result, we're going to have to get a little more creative. I got a little worried that I would have to spend ages grinding and get more pea shooter plants. Or, dare I say, buy them from the shop. But I remembered a nifty little 